Ranging from top 10 Switch games all the way to top 10 Wii games, in today's video, we moved on to everyone's favourite console, the DS. So hey guys, Matt and Tom from Nintendo Extreme is here. And we just want to say a big thank you for growing the NX family all the way up to 300 subscribers. It's immense the support you guys give us. With that said, today we'll be ranking the top 10 DS games. Kicking off the lesson number 10, we have Animal Crossing Wild World. This game is very easy and has laid back gameplay. You have to get used to the log camera gameplay, which can be annoying, but it is worth it once you get used to it. The graphics are smooth, crisp and colourful. Nothing really stands out and makes you say wow, but overall the graphics are quite good. The weather changes, river flows, leaves, fruits and the daylight cycle do make the graphics pop a little. The sound is good, the music you hear inside buildings and walking around is nice, but nothing impressive. The characters' mumble noises are a bit annoying, but luckily, the sound is saved by all of KK Slider's sick beats. The replay value is good, because the game never really ends. You can keep playing and playing and playing, but there will always be something to do. Whether it be catching more fish and bugs, finding more fossils, celebrating more holidays, or making more money, you will always be able to find something to do. The problem is that the things do get a little bit repetitive after a while. Overall, this game is quite solid, but ranks number 10. Which games are better? Kirby's been around as long as any Mario, Zelda or Metroid, for the most part his games have remained rather traditional, but if you happen to own a DS then you could be greeted by something new, in such case as Kirby Mass Attack at number 9. This game is gorgeous and a colourful side scroller, much like older Kirby's, the palette is vibrant and beautiful, and the animations are great, the enemies are as per usual of Kirby, silly but neat. The levels have a nice variety to them, with each world having a distinct style to it, there is never any graphical slowdown either, overall this is a Kirby and it looks stunning as a DS game can be. This is not a typical Kirby platformer, instead you control up to 10 Kirbys at once using a stylus. Yes that's right, 10 Kirbys. It works well, for the most part. This is somewhat challenging as you must predict their trajectory ahead of time. Finally you can tap at enemy and make them all gang up on the four and pummel them to death. Overall the controls are a little inconsistent but it is still fun to guide your Kirbys through the many levels of the game. Kirby Mass Attack is a well worth playing game and if you happen to enjoy the series this game will not disappoint. Additionally there is plenty of extra content and challenges for completionists to sink their teeth into whether you're but this game does help to spice up the franchise so I do recommend playing it. It only places 9th on this list because there are better games out there which you will see appear on this list. With that said, on to number 8. At number 8. We have one of my personal favourite games, Mario & Luigi Partners in Time. In my opinion, the Mario & Luigi series is often overlooked nowadays, which is a real shame, because on the DS there are two quality games in this series. However, Partners in Time has made onto this for a reason, and I'm going to tell you why. Partners in Time took everything that was good with Superstar Saga and mixed it with some brand new elements. In this game, if you already couldn't tell, it includes Baby Mario Baby Luigi, which is such a unique feature that hasn't been seen since. Personally, I think it's really cool to see um, the four characters interact with each other outside of the Mario Kart games. The, the beats can access small, hidden areas to find power-ups and secret items, to find and sometimes to even battle on their own. However, the path system hasn't been improved because the babies can heal their older selves if one of them dies. It also goes the same for sharing special power-ups and other healing items like herbs. The, the difficulty level in this game has been slightly increased as time goes on. The, the bosses have more health and the special attacks are more harmful later on in the game. The way that, this way that the game isn't too easy, but it's not overly difficult at the same time. The graphics have improved slightly, but not much from Superstar Saga. Mine would look more crisper, clear, and they seem to have lost a bit of weight. Same thing goes for the, with the environments. One thing I have to knock for this game though is the storyline. I mean, it makes sense to how the babies meet their older selves, but my word is it boring. Compared to Superstar Saga, this is not as funny, and Luigi just seems like he's the punching bag for all the jokes. Aside from these minor things, I really enjoyed this game, and I encourage you to play it if you have the time. At number 7 is the first Pokemon entry you make on the list. That's right, placing 7th we have the brilliant game that really has a devised fandom from the people who love it, myself included, to people who think it's mediocre. 
And that, of course, is Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team, the first Pokemon spin-off to make its way on the DS. Aside from the gameplay, which is old school and fun, and the graphics are simple and vibrant, the game's strongest point is its storyline. The storyline will captivate you and really suck you into its world. It will make you feel hate, love, sadness, joy and a lot of other emotions as the game progresses. The music also does a great job sucking you in, it probably sets the mood for the given situation, especially at the end of the game. Even after you finish the main quest, there's still a lot of things to keep you entertained and playing for quite some time. For example, you completionists out there, you can recruit other Pokemon to join your team and that alone will keep you hooked for quite some time. Even after the main story, the story even still extends further and offers more of its extraordinary storytelling. Overall, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team is a unique spin-off from the game's normal formula that never ceases to amaze you with its charm, and especially amazed me when I was playing it as a child and will forever leave an imprint in your heart and will be a fine addition to your collection. On to number 6. Following the events of The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker, at number 6 we have The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. This game takes you to the seas of Hyrule in search of treasure, answers and adventure that will be sure to entertain. For the first Zelda game on the DS, it is particularly innovative and creative. When it comes to graphics and sounds of Phantom Hourglass, it has to be one of the best on the handheld. Reminiscent of Wind Waker, the cinematics and gameplay are clean and solid, there are no instances of frame rate drop. Though some may not like the art style of the game, it will sure be an eye pleaser for many. The well known sounds of the Zelda series are present, while the sound may not be as epic compared to the console versions, the game's sound holds well on the DS. The game makes excellent use of the touchscreen, where other games treat the touchscreen as a gimmick, Phantom Hourglass maximises the use of the touchscreen, it moves Link about the area, utilises different weapons, allows for puzzle solving via drawing and allows players to draw on maps. There are clever features and add-ons to this game that will enhance the touch gameplay experience, such as making mental notes on maps. Phantom Hourglass is a must-play game for DS owners and Zelda fans. With solid gameplay mechanics, an interesting plot and excellent presentation, the game is worthy of its title. A great addition to the franchise and one of the best games on the DS, but definitely not the best. Just before we move into the top 5 best games on the DS, with half the video out of the way, me and Tom want to talk to you about the official NX Warehouse Discord server, in which we talk to you guys, get ideas from you guys, and just to get to be ourselves to you guys. If you want to see behind the scenes of the channel and get to know us, then make sure to join the Nintendo Extremist Discord server. Links will be in the description and in the iCards. With that out of the way, it's time to move on to the top 5 best games of the DS. Let's get into them now. Into the, the top 5, I'm out of Super Mario 64 DS. You guys know my love-hate relationship for this game on the N64, but you don't really know what I think of the remake on the DS. Before I do though, if you want to know my feelings towards the N64 game, check out the video why Super Mario 64 is overrated. Okay, she must put out the way, on to the game. The appearance of this game is exa the exact same as the original, but with a new few new things thrown in. You're still collecting stars and unlocking new areas and killing bosses, but you'll notice that basically everything has been possible since 1996. The, ma the, ma the major difference between this and the original is that the playable characters are different. Strangely enough, you don't start the game as Mario. Instead, you play as Yoshi, a character who wasn't nearly featured as much in the original as he should have been, trying to free Mario from Locked Dream inside Princess Peach's castle. Once you unlock Mario, you're going to access to his full abilities. You can even play as Luigi and Wario throughout the course of the game. In some levels, you may notice the hearts of each character in certain rooms or hallways. Whenever you pick one up, you change into that character. That represents for a short amount of time. This is always handy if you need to do something you can't do with your current character. The graphics, in my opinion, are way better than the 64 version. Character models are no longer blocky, animations are a lot more smoother, everything seems new and fresh, and most of the time I forgot it was a remake. This game is just, full, it's just packed full of charm from the very start, which is what the franchise is known for. The game also has exclusive minigames if you get, ever get bored from the main game, I just want to change. Most of these minigames are fun, quirky novelties such as card games with Luigi, a defense like minigame that involves shooting bob bombs, and even one way you draw lines where you decide to create trampolines for Mario to bounce off in order to, to stay alive. I can't tell you a bad minigame if I tried. All of them are original, creative, witty, clever, and most importantly, enjoyable. One thing that hasn't changed really from the original is the crappy controls. Just like in the original, you have to use the D-pad to move around, which sucks. And even worse, there's no C-stick either to help move on the camera, so that alone makes this game 10 times harder. It's after those nitpicks, this game is a DS classic and deserves its spot at number 5.
After Pokemon Black and White, we were all expecting a Pokemon Grey, right? As a third version? Just joking. But to our surprises, instead of getting a new game, we got sequels for those games. Well, technically it is a new game. A first for the series, and that's why at number 4 we have Pokemon Black and White 2. In these sequels, they give remixes from the previous games and reuse music. The music from the first game is brilliant, but the new stuff and the remixes are simply amazing. This is a game you'll want to try and play with sound on. An example is that every gym has its own remix of the traditional theme, giving them more personality. Other remixes in the game are also really good and catchy, as is the whole soundtrack to be fair. This game introduced personally one of my favourite legendary groups, that being the Swords of Justice which include Cobalion, Terrakion, Virizion, and of course Keldeo. Sorry if I butchered those names. And let's not forget how great the legendary forms of Kirum are, including Kirum himself who made it for an amazing antagonist in the Pokemon movie Kirum vs the Sword of Justice, which for me was a childhood phenomenon. The game offers players a regional dex of 300 Pokemon, which for a DS game is really incredible and will keep you playing for a long while. Most of the characters from the past game make a return, in fact that is the best part of the story. Seeing Sharon as a gym leader and Bianca as Professor Juniper's assistant is quite interesting as these are natural places for them to be. Black and White 2 offers one of the most amount of Pokemon content in the series thus far, while keeping the gameplay just as fun as always. As a major Pokemon fan who has played the games from every generation, I believe these are the greatest Pokemon games to date besides Gen 3 and 4, and is definitely worthy of its number 4 ranking. We're moving on to the top 3, what do you think will make it? I bet you're wondering when it's going to get mentioned. I really wanted my card DS to be number one on this list, but fortunately it couldn't, so it's hit number three. If you own a DS, you had a copy of this game, and if you didn't, then you're a loser. Sorry, not sorry. I played the hell out of this game when I was younger. In fact, I played it that much that I actually broke the R button on my DS. This game kept all the items from the originals, with the Bullet Bill, Blue Shell, and Blooper joining the party. The Blue Shell was actually used as a marketing gimmick to help sell this game. My God Jets is infamous for its drifting mechanics, known as snaking. Snaking is essentially a legal cheat code for this game. It's doing it when you, when you can gives you insane speed. If you want to get 3 star ranks for every single cup, you need to snake one as much as you can. My God Jets has some of the best tracks in the entire series, such as TikTok Clock, Wario Stadium, Luigi's Mansion, and of course, Waluigi Pinball. Waluigi Pinball is that kind of a track that we actually used and the music is our intro. In case you're that stupid and didn't did already know. Another great feature in this game is the bottom screen. The bottom screen is where your map and rankings of players are, so you have the whole top screen to yourself. You can tap the map to switch between where you're on the track and the original standard one. You can also use the bottom screen to create your own emblem, which is super cool. Another exclusive addition to this game is Mission Mode. The Mission Mode gives you tasks such as to pass through them with gates in order, follow racing lines, collect coins along the course, or use power slides with boosts. Each group of missions ends with a boss battle, which you take down by racing, hitting weak points, or ramming. It's so disappointing now I haven't seen this game mode return, but it does make that it does make DS a little bit more special. Overall, this is a fantastic game and a, necess and a necessity for the DS, but there are two other games that are better than this one. Let's see what they are. At number 2, just missing off as our top DS game, is Pokemon Diamond. And yes, for you Pearl and, and Platinum fans out there, I will just say Gen 4, although, pss, Diamond is better. As the first Pokemon game on the DS, the game was hyped to be the best in the series, and it definitely is, let me tell you why. The game has probably the best set of starters in the series thus far, that being Chimchar, Piplup, and my favourite starter, period to this date, the cute little tortoise, Turtwig. Additionally, the game added 107 new Pokemon, all with great design, which for a game created for the new generation of handheld gaming is impressive, even if it's not the biggest regional decks. The game also added some evolutions to some great Pokemon such as Magmar, Gligar, Pillowswine, Rhydon and Electric Buzz. Enough about the Pokemon of the game, so what makes Gen 4 stand out? Well now there is a split in physical and special attack, what this means is that the type of attack, physical or special, is now determined by each individual attack and not just the type it represents. This is a much needed feature and it doesn't help limit each type to one or the other. Gen 4's story is a long one, but it isn't a drag. It keeps you engaged the whole way through with there being side missions to complete so that you, so you keep playing for an extra long while. Which is great for people with the time on their hands, aka I do mean child mart. The graphics in these games are a complete visual upgrade from Gen 3. Of course with it being on the new console these games really utilises the DS hardware to create a game that is so stunning to the eye and a game that is great to look at whilst you grind. 
The updated animations are much needed, the sprites look a lot cleaner and more defined which makes battling all that more fun. And for games made all the way back in the 2000s, they became the very first in the series to include online, as well as the first to include trading through Wi-Fi, which is always appreciated. This decision has become a permanent one in the series and really defined Pokemon as such. Competitive battle would not be a thing, which in modern days is a big part of the Pokemon fandom and franchise. As a whole, it would also go further on to influence new gimmicks like Wonder Trade or now called Surprise Trade for some reason. Gen 8 really did have to be special, didn't it? For Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and Platinum to be released so early in the DS's life, they really have aged incredibly, utilising the DS's hardware well and still provide great storytelling and gameplay to this date. They were definitely a great welcome to the series, and by that alone they have secured a spot in number 2, just skimming first. But as we get closer to the number 1 DS game, I suggest if you've enjoyed the video thus far, you consider subscribing as me and Tom have more videos like this in the works, and we don't just mean top 10s. Here's a sneak peek of an upcoming video for the channel, and it's sure it'll be one you guys will like. So consider joining the NX family as you're always welcomed, with that out of the way, it is time for the top DS game of all time. And now, the number one best game on the DS is... New Super Mario Bros. New Super Mario Bros on the DS is the first of what will become the new Super Mario Bros series. This game was a massive success, it's been one of the best selling DS games of all time, seeing massive critical acclaim. As any mainline Mario game goes, the story starts of Mario and Peach walking back to the castle, when a sudden burst of lightning hits the castle. When Mario goes to investigate it, Peach is suddenly kidnapped by Bowser Jr. Mario gives chase, losing his mushroom power up in the process, and the game begins. New Super Mario Bros. retains the same gameplay as all the other games in the series, adding moves for Mario's 3D adventures like the Ground Pound, Wall Jump, and Triple Jump. This makes for a fresh take on the Mario franchise, as it modernises the classic Mario format that has been a staple for years. There's also options to play as Luigi when you enter the certain button and put the file select screen. With, with addition to this, there are two other modes. There's multiplayer, where two players can clash against each other to get the most stars in minigame mode which brings various minigames from, from the DS remake of Mario 64 onto this game. This includes counting games with Luigi, trampoline with a few Mario's, and many, many more. Overall, while the difficulty is quite low, it is a, fant a fantastic return to the form for Mario's. This is the best game in the new Super Mario Bros. series, as well as probably the best DS title of all time. When you think of a DS, you think of this game. So that wraps up this video. What do you think of our choices? If you like them, then make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video by us. If you didn't, then make sure to leave down below in the comments what you would have changed. Tell us what video you want to see next by us. And with that said, we've been Tom. And Matt, and we're signing out.